Hey guys, we have some really exciting information for you today. Yes, and it's all about, well, almost all of it is about downsizing. Yeah, and you're thinking, we've already talked about downsizing, enough of the downsizing already, but here's the deal. Yeah. Even when you're in an RV full time, you still need to downsize. Ta da! That's quite a mess. <laughs> all right, so this is step one take everything out of your space that needs to be downsized, put it all in a pile, and only put back the things that you are going to keep. Everything else has to be either. Have you learned anything from this process? No. Um, everything else has to either be given away or thrown out. That's it. Those yeah. are the only options. Those are really the only options. Or sold if it's worth anything. Sure. But nothing we have is really worth anything. So give away, garbage, or have to keep. Some of this stuff is going to end up in storage at our daughter's house, and the rest of it is going to come with us. We're going to try and bring the least amount of stuff with us on our next journey, which would be season five. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Wow. And you get to pull out all of the crap that's tucked into all the little places that you just don't want to think about. And yeah, it has to go somewhere. And we're in the middle. I've taken care of that mess. Oh yeah. Even when you're in an RV full time, you still need to downsize. That's right. It's part of the lifestyle because, hey, you don't have a lot of room. Well, we don't. Well, no, we don't. <laughs> we, we do not have a lot of extra room. So when we started to think about, well, what is downsizing now that we're on the road look like? It's not a one day event. It isn't. It's pretty much an ongoing process. Yeah, it's a so, mindset. Yeah, I was going to do a video for you guys and say, okay, today's my downsizing day and I'm just going to show you all the stuff that I'm working on to downsize. And the reality is it just happens on a fluid basis, like all yeah. the time. So when you bring something new into the rig, you're getting rid of something else. Yeah. You know, um, we'll talk more about what that looks like in a second, but we do have four main points that we want to actually share with you in hopes that it'll help you. Yeah. If you're already living full time in an RV and you're feeling a bit like clutter is taken over, hopefully today's video will help you deal with that. So downsizing is one of the biggest, potentially one of the biggest barriers to going full time in your RV life. There are so many things that we love and care about and treasure in our lives, in our houses, things that we've saved for years and years and all of a sudden got to get rid of all that stuff. What? That's way too much to ask. Guys, getting new stuff is, is usually a reality, but when you live in a, limited space that isn't helpful sometimes <laughs> amazon is not always your friend that's right <laughs> sometimes and your friends aren't always your friends <laughs> home depot isn't always your friend but costco is really not your one friend. of those bad bad friend relationships uh, not tech i mean not really a lot of people shop at costco even yeah. though they live full time in a rig but here's what can happen you can get a big thing of toilet paper say from costco and you want to put that under your under bed storage yeah you lift up your under bed storage to put the toilet paper away and it is packed with stuff and you're thinking that there's no room in here for all of this and you're thinking there used to be enough rolls uh, room enough for room, a room yes. for 12 or 24 or more rolls of toilet paper but there's no room now because as you were using it stuff got in the way yeah okay so the four main points we want to talk about today are the reasons why you would want to downsize when you're living full-time in an rv the first wait. <laughs> yeah the first one is wait <laughs> Dork. i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah wait wait your rig can get too heavy and every motorhome trailer yeah. whatever you're living in full-time has a weight limit it is so easy to acquire stuff you can stop at the gas station on your way and say hey they had a good deal on batteries well like car batteries right or whatever yeah. batteries yeah. they all weigh they're all heavy yeah so when you go through the scale you need to weigh your rig every once in a while and make sure that you're not running over weight because that will yeah. put extra pressure on your axles on your frame it's not good for your gas mileage there's just a yeah. lot of things that can go wrong plus the legalities of it yeah to not over to not exceed your cargo carrying capacity so there's other videos out there on the internet lots of great youtube yeah. videos on how to calculate your cargo carrying capacity and what that looks like but you need to find out what that number is and make sure you know your limit and stay within it and i'm sure somebody else will tell you about uh, traveling and weight tank use and all that stuff 
Uh, and that's not what we're talking we're about We're not today. talking about that today. But if you do find that your rig is overweight, you will need to downsize. You need to get rid of some stuff. And here's the kicker. I always thought, you know, getting rid of the heavy things. But honestly, even, you know, clothing can, can add up and yes. shoes can add up. And, you know, the things in your kitchen and extra utensils, those things all add up for weight. So don't, don't, okay, don't not get rid of something because you think, oh, that's not going to make any difference in the overall it weight. All it all makes a difference. And there's more than just weight because there's also clutter. Yes. So if you are a minimalist and if you have a small space, clutter is not an option. And so this would be our second point would be mental health. And yes. for me, when I live in a small space, I need open and empty places. So yeah. for she comes home and says, why are the drapes closed? Oh, open those drapes. Nuts. And I'm like, okay. He doesn't even notice if the drapes are open or closed. I'm editing. And when I have those drapes open, I want my dashboard to be yeah. fairly clean and, and not cluttered. I mean, a few things on there that I really love, but other than that, there should be empty space there. And especially when we've been stationary for a long time, there are lots of nooks and crannies in Bessie that are not empty spaces They're, right now. And it's dry. it literally is like, ah, get and it And sometimes up. the dash is a drop zone. The dash is a drop zone. The uh, floor space in front of our captain's chairs are also a drop zone. Yeah. In behind the couch can be a drop zone. The table um, right in the door can be a drop zone, but not for very long not usually, for long. Uh, which the, is good. The space behind our bed, like at the foot of our bed, that can be a drop zone. Yeah. So those areas, when they get cluttered, are stress me out. So a good yeah. reason to downsize is for your mental health. Mental health. It is, there's just something that, there's like a literally a weight taken off your shoulders when you're able to yeah. just clear some clutter out of your house so well there's also the ability to, to access or find what you're looking for that does play into the mental yes. health thing because if you're looking for something and you have to like dig around into the back of a closet and things are falling out and now you've got a great big mess that's another reason to go crazy that's right oh <laughs> that it's is a high stress builder right it's there. raining i need my rubber boots oh no this is a half hour project exactly. to find those rubber boots it's like no 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 that's not good for mental health so being able to access the things you need if you're cooking and you know that you have certain spices that you use regularly make sure that those are at the front of your account of your cupboard so you can access them and mental health can also be mental health between us because <laughs> honey like marital health she she did a cleanup and i'm like honey where's the and it's not where there. are my slippers where are my shoes where's my anything where's it's my... not there yeah um so it's somebody's fault so kent is more of a pack rat and he doesn't yeah. mind the clutter i am more of I a minimalist i am like get rid of the clutter so definitely we have to work together on making sure that things are set up properly so that they make sense for both of us. And if you got to downsize, like why are we buying more stuff for stationary and pretty things for your your day planner My stuff? My planner? Like seriously, we already bought planners, more we already stickers, brought stuff. More pens, like, more we highlighters. Don't need any more of this. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you do have to limit the stuff that you have. But if you have a hobby, hobby stuff takes up space. Yes. I knit and crochet and that stuff takes up room. So Hey, I've been stationary, so I've been able to get rid of some computer stuff that's been hanging around because we don't use it anymore, but I didn't want to get rid of the hard drive and now I have a hard drive dock. So now I can manage that and use them. So there you go. Okay. So I think along those lines, like the hard drives, Kent's a tech guy. He likes that stuff. I'm more crafty sort of, not like some of you are really crafty. I'm not that crafty. I'm just more like, you know, knitting and crocheting. Um, I'm going to give you guys a couple of questions to ask yourself when you are getting rid of some things, whether it's clothing, craft supplies, tech stuff, yeah. extra utensils in your kitchen. The questions are, do I absolutely love this item? Yeah. And do I absolutely need this item? Which kind of goes along with, do I regularly use yeah. this item? Like so. if your life is better because you have it, mm -hmm. um, and everybody else agrees, uh, then keep it. Yeah. Don't get rid of it. Yeah. But if you haven't looked at it in two years, tell yourself again why you have to keep it. Yeah, exactly. And then the fourth thing that we really want to talk to you about is it will save you time. Yeah. When your rig is running efficiently and you know where things are, you can get to things quickly. You don't have to have a great big tumbling down mess of closet when yeah. you have to reach into the back to get your sweater or your, your rubber boots. Um, it will save you time. And along with that saving time mentality, we wanted to touch on a subject here that is really important when you're living tiny. Yeah. Every item needs to be multitasking because that also saves you time. So, and space. 
Yeah. So a good example is the Instant Pot. A lot of RVers have an Instant Pot or a reasonable facsimile. Why? And the reason is because it's, it's big. You think, hey, this thing, when I first got mine, I'm like, this is big. I'm trying to downsize and get tiny. Why is this thing so big and why am I packing it around everywhere? But it saves me from having to have other appliances. Like I don't need to have a rice cooker or a slow cooker. It actually even acts as a saucepan if I just want to boil yeah. water or make pasta or whatever. So there are lots of different things you can do with that. It's a good example of multitasking items. Do yeah. you have any examples? Um, I do actually. Um, when you are consolidating your tool sets, um, I had an 18 volt drill, okay? Milwaukee, loved it, used it tons. And when I moved into the motorhome, I also had a 12 volt setup on three or four different items. And I'm like, I don't need both. So I left my 18 volt drill. I, I gave it to my son-in-law and said, this is yours. Here's your charger. Here's your two batteries. You're good. Why? Because I wasn't going to use it every day and I didn't need to have two drills or three drills with me. There you go. Consolidating. There you go. Anything else? Yes. I've... Oh done lots of things there is one other thing we wanted to mention to you is that sometimes you have things in your RV that you just need it might not multitask it might not be small it might not you know be something you absolutely love and brings you joy but you just need it and one yeah. example we have for that is our washing machine it's a yeah. washer spinner combination it sits in our shower it's our tiny shower it's inconvenient because when we want to have a shower we have to pull the whole thing out and then put it all back in again uh, but it makes our life so much better saves us money having that it saves us money it saves us time yeah um it's just super super great so there are and there's some just two of us like that. now i know some people have had one of those washers and they said it doesn't work for us they have a family of four yeah they were in a place where things wouldn't dry properly it didn't work yeah exactly so not saying that everybody should have one but that's an example of yes. an item that you might just have to have because it just you just need it it just yeah. works so what do you put in storage Right, exactly. So we did have a comment on one of our, I think it was our last downsizing, our downsizing video, video actually. Yeah. And the comment was to the effect of why wouldn't I just scan my pictures, yeah. my photos Your and photo my photo albums, albums yeah. and then put the albums and the pictures into storage, yeah. which is a great solution. And for a lot of people, that is what they would do. We don't actually pay for storage. We have just a little bit of space in our daughter's uh, furnace room. Yep. And so we don't want to take up a lot of space. And when Kent and I were talking about it today, we were like, well, and why would you store them? So you have to have a reason or an end game or a plan as to why you're storing something. Yeah. I know a couple that said they, they, they looked for three years to find the perfect couch and they didn't want to part with it right away because they just got it. They just found it. So yeah. store it, sure. Um, but you have to have a, a, a solution for why you're storing it and for when it will make sense for you to keep on holding on to that. And when it comes to photographs and photo albums, we realized that we could make the decision to say it's going to benefit us to have a copy of those that we can take with us forever on multiple digital formats and it won't benefit us to carry around books that don't get opened. Exactly. So there's no point for us to keep any of those photo albums and photos right. because we don't have any plans for them in the future. That Those friends of ours that kept that really brand new fancy couch, they're probably going to use it again one yeah. day. They'll probably put it in there, you know, when they finish RVing, they'll put it in their house or they'll find a place maybe for it, they'll give it to important. their kids or something. So yeah, I think if you're thinking of, should I, should I store this or should I, should I get rid of it? Only store things that you really plan on using again in the future. Yeah. Don't store things that you know, will you'll store until your estate sale and someone else can get rid of it. It's like, if you can yeah. deal with it today, deal with it. And that we talked about in our last downsizing video. Do your kids really want your stuff? So you yeah. can go watch that one and we'll have more of a conversation about that over there. Excellent. So a couple more things. Number one, I have room for two of these little guys, okay? Uh, right now I have one for work. I'm getting rid of that one as soon as we leave here because it's worn out. And I just got this one. I'm happy with this. But I got rid of my Disney World hat. So what I did is I did close-ups on the embroidery in about eight different spots because I really bought the hat because of the beautiful embroidery on it. And I get to take that with me forever and remember it well. Mm -hmm. And have so. the memories of when you bought it and where you yeah. were and all so that So take a picture, stuff. a really take good picture. Take lots of pictures, take videos, take, yeah. you know, share memories with people, yeah. you know, whatever. But don't necessarily keep the stuff just because you like the stuff. Yeah. All right, so just to quickly review, the rules are, do you love it? Do you need it? Do you use it? Yeah. And the four points are, 
the motivation for downsizing when you're full-time in an RV is wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> That's the and big one. And mental health yeah. and being able to access the stuff you need and time. It'll save you time. And that's it. And, so, and what was your rule last time? Everything has its place, a place oh, for everything? Oh, a place for everything and everything in its place. Oh, speaking of which, my name's Kent. My, oh, we're not done yet. Oh, well, we could say this stuff. <laughs> Record it, a, quick. A place for everything and everything in its place. That and, is the key for sure. Yeah. And speaking of that, my name's Kent. My name's Lisa. And we're living light RV. <laughs> we're grabbing life by the tail. We hope you guys are too. Have fun with your downsizing. Go ahead and leave in the comments below your best tips for downsizing yeah. your RV. See you next Thursday. We did not say our announcements. Beep, 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 beep. Here's the insert right here, right now. Go. Announcement one, number one. Hey guys, we have some really cool, exciting information for you. We creating or are creating a tab on our website called yes. Q21, and that stands for Quartzsite 21. So you can go to livinglightrv.com slash Q21 and get all the deets on Quartzsite 21. It's gonna be fantastic. Excellent. It's gonna be in January. We hope you guys can come and join us as well as a whole bunch of other RVers and yeah. YouTubers and friends. Like guys, this is like serious time to connect and Very build serious. your community, build your RV community. So. Oh, and this last week, cause I'm the tech guy, um, I retooled our, our hello at livinglightrv.com. It was not quite working as good as it should have. Our email? And so, Yes, and some yeah. of you know that and I've retooled it. So yeah. we get every email now, so we're good. Email should be working now. Smooth. And another big announcement is. We will have a live <laughs> presentation, we're going a live. fundraiser. Um, for Anna. On September 1st, it's a Tuesday. Yep. We'll be going live and we, okay, here's the deal. You guys are part of this because yes. we need to fundraise $2,000 for Anna to get her little butt over to Africa. She is going to be teaching art at an international school. We are so excited for yes. her. And we know a lot of you guys are excited for her too. You've been following her journey. Yep. She's been interviewed on Daydream About Nice Things and on the Diary of a Family channel. And I I think that's the two interviews so. she's done. And this fundraiser is just to cap off and give her a few extra things so that when she gets there, she can she can just get a few things that she needs. Without having to she's got everything else set finances. up. Yeah. yeah. So, but she's gonna fundraise having all her hair cut off. What? All her hair cut off? Yes. Have you she's guys done, seen Anna's hair? She's done with the dreadlocks. She's got dreadlocks. She's moving on into she's a different chapter of her life. Say goodbye to the dreads. So, yeah. if you want to watch Anna have her dreadlocks shaved off on September 1st on Living Light RV Live, Yes. then go ahead and click on the link in the description below. It's for Anna's, um, Anna's art teacher, international school, new adventure that she's going on. What is the link on. to? The link goes to her, um, her uh, what's it called? SIM? Yeah, well the link goes to her organization that she's going with. Yeah. So you can actually um, give her a donation there and get a tax receipt for that as well. So. Yep. Go ahead and click on that link, drop a couple pennies into Anna's pocket, help her get over to Africa, and we can go live on September 1st. It's a Tuesday. Yes. Maybe it'll be a Tuke Tuesday. It might even be a Tuke Tuesday. It might be a Tuke Tuesday. It might not. We'll have to see. But we have to raise that $2,000 first. Otherwise, we're just going to cut our hair and it won't be on live. Yeah. So if you want to see it live, go ahead and donate. You guys, thank you so much for your support. Thank, thank you, you for loving our family. We love you guys. Take care. We'll see you next Thursday.